Hello you guys, I want to take a moment and go over how we can use uh, our commander to help us with central limit theorem problems when we are dealing with proportions. Okay, so here's this scenario. It says Jocelyn has decided that she is interested in entering into a cooking competition. She knows that the true proportion of people doing these competitions that have more experience than she does is 25%. At this competition, 182 people have registered to compete. Okay, so before we get started, uh, let's go ahead and take some of this information and get it kind of put down again. So when we see that we have a true proportion of people having more experience than she does, we know that that is going to be pi. And that true proportion is 25%, or we can say 0.25, where the proportion that have more experience than she does is 25%. Okay. And then at this competition, 182 people have registered to compete. So we know that that's going to be the sample size that we're interested in is this 182. Perfect. The next thing that we want to see is that we might also be interested in pi complement or the probability that somebody has less experience than she does. And that's just simply one minus pi and we can see that it is 75%. Okay, so now we get this question, what's the probability that more than 47 participants have more experience than she does? Okay, well, let's first see like what proportion 47 is. So let's see if we get 47, uh, and we'll have this be like our well, let's, let's first do this as our observations. So observations one that we're interested in is like this 47. And so then proportion one is just our observations that we're interested in divided by our sample size of n. And we get this proportion one of 0.2582. And so it's asking us is what's the probability that more than 47 or it is sorry that more than 40 percent participants have more experience than she has so it's this proportion of 0.258 of being 0.258 or higher for the proportion okay so let's go ahead and get this into our our commander the one more step that we need to do is we actually need to figure out our variance so if we type in like variance or sigma squared, and we'll just do sigma two, and that is just simply, it's going to be pi times pi complement divided by our sample size. That's going to give us our variance and then our standard deviation is going to be equal to the square root of sigma two, of our sigma squared, or our variance. And so we have a variance, or a standard deviation of like three, three percent, something like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and import, or put our data into our R commander. So we can go to our basic statistics, random variables, continuous distributions, normal distribution, and normal probabilities. Okay. So before we kind of get into this, let me go ahead and, oops, sorry. Okay. So as we're doing this, let's just get our variables out again so that we have them just down again. So we've got pi, we've got our sigma, just so that we've got those two out. Okay. So when we're dealing with proportions, the mean is actually equal to pi. And if we look on our cheat sheet, this is what uh, what one of our definitions is, is that pi is actually mu sub p, or the mean with respect to our proportions, and its definition is pi. So I'm just going to copy that over, and I'm going to put that in our mean spot and paste it there. The standard deviation that we're interested in is the standard deviation that we calculated, this sigma. So let's copy that, and let's paste it in right there. And then what it's asking is, okay, so what's the probabilities uh, from a certain spot and to another? And we need to write out our probability statement. So here, 
the probability statement is just going to be the probability of x, and x is just a random event. And a random event is um, the proportion of people who are coming to this uh, to this cooking competition that have more experience than Jocelyn. So we want to say what's the probability the proportion that have more experience than Jocelyn is greater than our P1, which was this 0 0.258 etc. That's the probability that we're looking for. Okay, so if we type out P1 again, we can grab this probability. And since we're looking for it for greater than, we're going to copy this guy and put it in the from, and the two we can just leave alone. We can just not even touch it. Plot our region. Let's give it a better color than gray. Click OK. And let's go ahead and click Apply. Okay, so the proportion, the, the true mean proportion, or like, yeah, this true proportion of people who do these competitions that have more experience than Jocelyn is 25%. And she's wanting to know what's the probability that 25.8% have more experience than her at this particular competition. And we get a probability right here of basically 40%, or this 39867. Uh, and so when we look at our answer, there it is, 39.87. All right, so we got our first one down. So the next one says that the competition at this cook-off officially is actually really stiff. In fact, it falls at the top 14% where the other contest contestants are more experienced than Jocelyn. How many people are more experienced than her? And we're going to round up. Okay, so this is actually a quantile question where we are given actually instead the percent greater than, than her and we are going to instead try to figure out uh, the the critical proportion um, that that would make it so that's the top 14 percent so the top 14 percent so imagine that we don't have this green area here and what we're doing is we're just trying to fill up the area under the curve so that it's like 10 percent we know that up to here is 40 percent so i want to say that 10 percent is probably close around 30% that this competition, actually 30% of the competition has more experience than she has. Okay, so let's see what that, what that actually does. If we want to solve that type of question, what we need to do is we just need to go to our continuous variables, normal, and this time it's a quantile question. So the mean again is our pi or 0 0.25, our standard deviation is this same standard deviation that we used before. But this time, instead of providing like a critical point and us finding the probability, this time it's giving us the probability and we need to find the critical point. And the probability that was given to us is 14%. Now the only thing that we need to do is decide do we want to go from the lower tail or from the left end, or do we want to go from the upper end? And we want to go from the upper end because that's what would make this competition really stiff for her. So we're going to click that upper tail and let's just go ahead and click apply. And we see that it's actually this 28%. So it's pretty close to that 30 that we had. And what we need to do now is if you notice, it says how many people are actually more experienced than her. This is the proportion that are more experienced than her. So if we want to go from the proportion to the actual number, what we need to do is we need to take this value, copy it, and we need to multiply by our sample size, which was n. And we get this 51, it tells us to round up, and so it would be 52 people at this particular competition has more experience than she does. Okay, so finally it says Jocelyn actually performs best in competitions where only 21% to 29% are better than her, and what is the likelihood that this occurs? Okay, so now this is just asking us like in the graph, like the, um, we need to figure out what's the area between 21% and 29%. So if we go to basic statistics again, we can go to random, continuous, and go to our normal distributions and our normal probabilities. We're going to use these same values here, but instead the probabilities are going to be from 0.21, and instead of going to infinity, we're going to go to 0.29. And we'll leave it as green and we'll just click apply. 
And if we go and look at our graphic again, this is from 21% to 29%. And this is when it, when she performs her best or she has her best outings at their competitions that, that typically happens about 79% of the time. And so that's how we can do this central limit theorem with proportions. It follows essentially the same rules as before. We just have to know how we can change our, um, instead of using just a mean, we're using pi. Instead of, you know, given a standard deviation, we can calculate out this standard deviation. Um, and we did that. Let's grab that equation again. Let me go up a little ways. And here's the variance that we got. It was pi times pi complement divided by the square root of n. And then to find the standard deviation from that that we're interested in, we just took the square root of that. That gave us our standard deviation. And then still our pro probabilities are critical points. We were given those critical points. When we were given the probability, we were able to actually track down the proportion that was critical and then went to this um, number of people that we're interested in. Anyhow, that's how we can use our central limit theorem and normal probability tools in order to answer questions like this.